Suppose you hypothesize that psychology students are smarter than law students. Now, you, you want to test this hypothesis by measuring the IQ of both groups. And you also hypothesize that the difference between these two groups, independent groups, is a um, coins D of 0 0.20. So it's a small effect size. Now, you want to make sure that if, in fact, it is true that psychology students have a slightly higher IQ compared to law students, you want to make sure you're able to detect this difference so that you don't waste resources and time um, with an underpowered study, which means that you have to run a power analysis. And a power analysis will tell you how many participants you need in this group and in this group in order to find a difference of 0 0.20. Now, power is defined as the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. And in this case, we will use power at 0 0.80, which means 80%. What this means is that if I were to run the same experiment 100 times, I will be able to detect a difference of 0.2 between these two groups at least 80 times. Okay, I will also need to set the alpha level at um, well 0.05, which is the typical one. And so when I run the power analysis and I enter all these three parameters, so the uh, 0.2, uh, point, uh, 0.2 effect size, 0 0.80 power, and 0.05 for the alpha level, the power analysis will tell me what is the total sample size, so how many participants I, I need in total um, be, among law and uh, psychology students. But now let me show you how to run a power analysis with the software G-Power to determine how many participants I need. So as I was saying, because this is a, um, a, a, uh, an independent sample uh, or, or a between-group design, I need to choose the appropriate uh, test statistics and therefore I will need to run a t-test because we only have two uh, groups. Once I, I choose the appropriate t-test family I need to choose the appropriate statistical test and of course because it's a uh, between group design I will need to run a um, an independent sample t-test so I will click on that one. Also I will need to choose the appropriate type of power analysis and as I was saying because we are um, imputing the uh, alpha level 0 0.05, power 0 0.80, and effect size 0 0.2, I am asking the software to tell me what the required sample size to find a, um, an effect size of 0 0.2. And it's called a priori power analysis. Priori means before running the actual study. So I will choose that one. Um, two tails, uh, you can leave it at uh, one or two, but for the purposes of this demonstration we'll leave it at two because it's more typical. The effect size, as I was saying, uh, we, we are interested in, in identifying a small effect size, so that's uh, 0.2. And the error probability is the typical uh, 0.05, so you can leave that as it is. Then power. Now, as I said, we are going to set it at 0.80, which means 80%. You may say, well, if I increase power, which is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis, if there is a, uh, a false null hypothesis, that is, if, if there is an effect to be found, um, well, increasing power should increase the probability. And therefore, why set it at 0.80 when you could set it at 0.95? The problem is that as you increase power, and I will show you this later in a graph, but as you increase power, you will also increase the total sample size. And so typically researchers are happy to leave power at 0 0.80. But I will show you later in a graph um, the relationship between power and sample size. Allocation ratio just means um, here one to one. So one in the, uh, you will allocate or you will recruit uh, one participant in the psychology group uh, for every one participant in the law group. And then you just click on calculate. Now here the G-Power tells you that the total sample size is 788 and that's 394 participants per group. 
Now, if I were to um, increase the um, effect size that I'm interested in uh, detecting, say to 0.5, which is a, a medium effect size, the sample size, the total sample size will decrease. Why is that? Well, because if there is a true difference in IQ, if, if there is a genuine difference between law students and psychology students, let's say uh, psychology students have higher IQ than law students, and but this difference is actually quite small, it will be more difficult to detect a very small difference, which means you need more participants to be able to detect such a small difference. But if there is a large difference, that is, psychology students are way smarter than law students, then it won't be that difficult to detect it, and therefore you will require fewer participants. Now, the choice in the effect size is dependent upon uh, a number of methodological and statistical things that um, we will discuss in another video. But just uh, for the purposes of this uh, video, I can, well, what I can say is that if you um, believe that uh, finding an effect that is um, a small effect size is maybe clinically relevant or pragmatically relevant, then by all means try to detect a small effect size. You may also ask, well, how do I know uh, in advance what kind of effect size uh, I'm looking for? Am I looking for a small, medium or large effect size? Well, that's partly dependent on previous literature, what the literature has been showing, whether there is a very small difference between these two groups or a medium or a large difference. And I want to show you um, the plot that I was talking about. So again, if we have um, uh, our effect size and uh, error probability um, imputed here, and you click on draw plot, as you can see, you can see here that as power increases to 0.6, so that's 60%, all the way up to 0.8, as I was showing you before in the example, sample size also increases. It goes higher. And as you can see, the power, when power is set at 0.8 8 or 80%, as it increases to 0.95, the number of participants goes really high. And this is for a medium effect size. If I were to impute a small effect size, the numbers are even um, larger. So as you can see at 0.80, we've got about 700 participants as the uh, previous power analysis was showing. Um, so if I impute the 0.2 and we get a 788, which is pretty much the same as here. And so as you can see that there is a really close relationship between a, a positive relationship between um, increase in power and, and, and uh, an increase in the total sample size. So this was a uh, power analysis for um, a between-group design. Thank you very much uh, for listening.